I was born in Cape Toronto um, on a place they call Hilly's Hill. My daughter was born the night I moved here in Cape from a farm out in Jackson on Highway 72. When I first moved to Cape, I lived on in North Street in the area where the post office is at. And then I, when my dad died, I moved to the south side because that's in the 400 block of South Hanover. That would be your south side. And we did move to uh, South Cape, which was Vine Street. And uh, I went to cop school up until the eighth grade. It was very nice. It was like a, just a, a neighborhood of relatives. Uh, friends would get together and have a backyard cookout, crank up the ice cream maker and make ice cream. We just had a nice relationship. We all took care of each other's children. I sat on the porch and watched them play or played with them so they wouldn't fight. The first time they had a fight, I said, no, we're not fighting in this neighborhood. We're gonna love each other. The people are waving, hello, hi, you enjoy yourself. So it was, it was a good experience to me, it really was. We had mothers at the Civic Center to take care of us while our mother and my father worked. You know, I could go to the Civic Center and Miss Mary and Miss Sterling would uh, say, come on in here, girl, you know, you want some cookies? They had games for us, they protect us. We don't have that. We don't have that kind of network. It's so different now, it's gone downhill. The people are not taking care of the property that's living there now. It, it looks awful. And I wouldn't sit on the porch much in the daytime. I would never be there at night. It started back in the day and no one was connecting anymore. You know, our families were uh, to themselves, you know. You had a lot of families uh, fighting one another. In my day, I never heard of people killing each other like they are now. That's why I said it's not safe to sit on your front porch now. I, I cannot yell at a kid across the street, be careful, don't do that. I can't do it because the they retaliate on me and their parents will see to me that evening. That's not your kid, mind your own business. That wasn't the day I was raising my children. They see a huge change uh, in Cape, uh, the crimes and things like that. They We didn't have that. I mean. You talking about just 10 years ago, or, or even less, I would say eight years ago, we didn't have the crimes that we have today. Because when I came along, people sat on the front porch, or they visited each other, you got yourself a card game, they would play cards, and they would laugh and talk, and I, you don't see that anymore. You just don't see it anymore. And the thing that I would like to see is the community to come together and let us help you raise your child. You know, it take a village to raise a child, and we need to be that village again. And now it seems like we're kind of floating backwards again, and I would like to see us move forward again and start making better progress for Cape Girada for our young people. Those are the people that I'm most concerned about is our younger generation that they will be able to uh, move forward and do good things. So I think that if we, as mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, uncles and aunts, can come together to help our babies, I think it would be, the change that we will see will be huge. I don't think we will have the killings. I don't think we will have the crime. I really don't. I think more kids will be graduating from high school, you know, because we have a, problem there too. I don't think it'll be as much sadness as it is today. I lived here all my life. Um, I went away uh, from university but then it was always with the intent of coming back because I loved my community. Um, I lived in South Cape for about 20 years and it was a community. If the lights went out People would step out on their porches and actually ask about each other. Hey, are you okay? It's my home. It's where I it's where I've grown up at. I mean, I've lived. That's I'm a lifelong resident of South Cape. Um, I used to run around the neighborhood, go up the street, get a soda pop off the ladies' porch, uh, go home and you know drink it, or go to the candy store. Miss Ratliff's was you know a few blocks away. My school. I walked to my school. 
Um, it, it's just, it's my home. Every time I'm there, it's just, it just feels like home. I like South Cape because of the people. And, and, they, and the ones that I do meet, they're genuine, they're real. When I grew up here, like everybody literally for three or four block radius knew each other. And so when you would go down the street, someone's grandmother or somebody would see you doing something and they'd be like, you know, before you get home, your mom already knows you've already done it because it's been reported back that this is what you got, what you've done. But we don't have that any, we don't have that anymore. Ain't a whole lot of interaction going on versus, uh, you know, if you go to church, you go to work, you go home, and that's it. Um, I think historically, uh, South Cape has been more of an impoverished neighborhood. There are others in the in the city, but for some reason, it's become the poster child for pos for, for poverty in Cape Dorado. Well, I think the negative mindset comes from people hearing that there may be drug activity, or there may be uh, assaults, or shootings, something like that along those lines in South Cape. Um, does that happen? Absolutely. Does that happen in other portions of the city? Absolutely. Does that happen in every city in America? Most often. I think with youth not having a lot of activity, um, they tend to rob and, and shoot and uh, think guns are toys. And then you have a lot of deaths and murder in the area, a lot of robberies. That part makes it scary. You know, and it's other youth out there that has no nothing to do but allow themselves to get in trouble doing something crazy. And this is what people see. So when you when you have a history of crime or stories about crime, you have a history of what appears to be uh, impoverished neighborhoods, and you hear story after you hear the bad things because that becomes the story that people tell. You create this culture in the community. Um, I think if we had the same resources that are pretty much available in every other area of Cape, it would make a major improvement and give some ownership to the area so that people will, you know, want to report and tell people to stop destroying their neighborhood. It would make everybody, I think, feel a little bit better and, you know, want to keep it as nice as we can get it. But it's all about perspective and perception and, and um, representation until we start telling the good stories that come out of Cape Dorado, all people are going to hear is bad. People are reaching out to people and, and reaching across lines and trying to get things accomplished throughout the community. And that's something that uh, is always going to work and is always going to prosper any type of section within the community. The things that I fight for, I don't fight for them necessarily for myself that I expect it to happen within my lifespan or for me, but for that my nieces and nephews so that they can have a better a better future and a better life and a better experience. It's, it's hard because sometimes you can't, I live in that house where you, if you go one way, there's a good side. And if you go the other way, it's probably gonna be not really good. It's rough because like, like going walking down the street and stuff would be all litter. And like, it ain't a lot of places to hang out or nothing. Um, it's good living in the house, but like, when I ride my bike and stuff out by the dumpsters, there's trash everywhere. And when me and my sisters walk somewhere, there's like trash everywhere. I mean, it's okay, uh, but there's a lot of shootings. There's a lot of drug places. I know there's a place where people go to have, you know, drug stuff. But. It's a couple good people, but like it's a lot of like stuff that be happening over there, like shootings and all of that. There's a lot of people shooting kids and stuff, shooting over by where we live. The richer neighborhoods, I mean, they're like kind of brighter, so I feel like ours could be like a little bit brighter. It looks a little like shadowy and stuff. I think they feel like we live in like good, but it's not as good as they think it is. I think they look at it as something very bad, but I, my personal opinion, I think they should look at it as something good because there's a lot of family over there. There's a lot of good stuff going on. I mean, there's a bad in everywhere. Like, there's not like a, I'm gonna say there's a good side of town, but there's a little bad everywhere. 
It's not, no, no, no side of the neighborhood's perfect. What's good about living in Cape is like other communities and stuff and they pick up that, that trash. Start helping out more and picking up the trash and like stop all the killings and stuff. And then there's kind of immediate stores that are broken down. We could like probably take those down and make them into something better. Or it's like, I know a lot of places have gone out and built a uh, business. So we could like take those down and make something better. I would like there to be more restaurants, more roaming space for other kids. So as soon as they walk outside, they wouldn't get hurt, but they would be able to go somewhere safe. Because if everybody is dying and shooting, there won't be any more people left. I would say, don't judge a book by its cover. I would say, get to know South. Because if we work together, our community overall will be one of the best.